All right, so since I need motivation to see what this is gonna look like when it's done, I already sanded this, but I'm gonna polish it up some more just to make it super clean. The plan is to use all Rust-Oleum paints. We're gonna use filler primer just on top of the primer I had already used. And these are the two colors I'm gonna use. I don't know if it'll focus, but they're both called colored chrome custom colors. So they're automotive paints, so they, they hopefully should give a nice finish. And then we're gonna just throw a clear coat on top of it. <laughs> so hopefully it looks pretty. Okay, so we're done painting the chest piece. This is what it looks like. I love this color. I don't know, it, I've always said, if I could have a suit any color, it would be blue and silver. This is literally the color blue that I would have if I could have any color Iron Man suit. I'm so hyped about it. I was annoyed though, a moth did fly into my clear coat after I painted it, but it's fine. So anyway. We're happy with the color. We're gonna go ahead and start planning how I'm gonna paint the rest of it. I'm now looking at it and I'll show you in a minute. Honestly, the applet looks really nice just staying black. So ignore how things don't really look put together, but honestly, keeping the blue and black theme, if I kept some black down here and made the sides this type of silver, I think it might look really nice. I could even take some of the graphite powder um, that I've used before and coat the black just to kind of make it look just slightly more matte colored um, and have a cool little gunmetal finish. Uh, so I don't know, I'm thinking I might keep more parts black than I originally planned to. So now that I'm thinking I want to keep more pieces black, I'm thinking I might paint it more of a Mark 47 type of color scheme where the top half was kind of red and the rest was silver, but the boots and the arms were also red, where in this case it would be blue. So. Um, this is the arm. If y'all haven't seen the arm on YouTube yet, it does this now. I did this in a day, which is why I did not record it for YouTube because honestly recording YouTube videos takes a hot minute to record and then to edit them. So I didn't really think about recording how I did this since I wanted to finish it within 24 hours. Um, but it does that. So I'm thinking I'll end up painting the top part of this blue with silver here in the middle as like the secondary color and then probably keep the forearm blue with black and silver. Honestly, it might mostly be in the ab section and keep the arms and the legs blue. I just don't want it to look unfinished. So we'll figure out kind of the best in between of keeping the silver and the black in there because it looks dope, but also not making it look unfinished. So something else I haven't shown since last time is I actually connected the ab plate to the hip piece. Um, the hip piece has buckles in here, I'll show you that. These pieces on the back actually can flex because um, they are hard plastic, so I wanted to be able to keep them in separate pieces, just connect them with foam. Um, so they do flex just a little bit. And then this front piece comes off too, so I can actually get in and out of it. So I have all that, but now the next step is to attach the flexible sides of the ab pieces. I still need to clean it up a little bit. I did some cleaning up since last time, but the strings are still there. But I need to attach this to the back of the hip piece. So this will actually fit inside of the hip piece and have the spine on the back like that. So we gonna go glue it together. Okay, so we've got everything connected. This is the back of the ab piece and this is the front. Um, both of them connect together with buckles. Uh, I realize it kind of defeats the purpose of being able to bend forward if I have buckles here, um, so we might get rid of those. But everything should buckle together pretty nicely, actually. So I'm actually able to click that in, click this in, and then I'll click it in on the bottom too, just to hold it secure like that. And this is able to sit in the front so when I bend forward, everything bends with it. We got the chest piece again, and on the back of the chest piece, I have two buckles now. This is fiberglass, by the way, so which is why it looks kind of wonky, but it is as hard as a rock. So I can actually buckle the ab piece to the chest. So now it's not going anywhere. Uh, when I move up, the ab piece will extend too. When I bend forward, 
they collapse on top of each other. There's going to be this gap in between here and here, which I'm probably honestly just going to end up buckling this to the ab plate itself so it kind of bends with it. But overall, this is what it looks like. I'll put on what I've got so far real quick. So this is kind of what it looks like so far with the legs and the abs on. You can see when I bend like this, everything kind of bends with it. And now if I attach the chest piece to that, it stays pretty well aligned, honestly. It's going to be pinned um, up here on the back brace that I make. Um, that back brace is going to connect the chest here to the back and here to the back. It'll also hold the shoulders and it's actually also going to contain the electronics in the back panel for a can of compressed air to simulate rockets coming out of the back flaps and the electronics to control the back flaps and the shoulder missiles. For more mobility, I'm thinking I might chop off the top of the thigh. You can see when I bend it, it really gets in the way. So I think I might chop it off and reattach it with springs so that it can kind of flex out instead of like digging into my skin or the bottom of the hip piece when I bend my leg. But kind of what I mentioned before in terms of color scheme, I like the blue. Um, I like this black being here and the hips being black too. Uh, I might paint this silver and then do blue on the arms and the legs uh, along with silver and black in different places. But I do like the blue and black color scheme. So hopefully if that doesn't look unfinished, um, I might try to do something like that. So another small update. Um, you ever invented something that, that's already been invented? Because I sure as heck just did. So apparently the double hinge knee idea I had with the gear and stuff, that that's the joints that are used in knee braces. I had no idea. I thought knee braces were just supposed to hold your legs straight, not necessarily hold the like top of your knee in place or anything. But apparently they do that too. So I bought the cheapest knee brace on Amazon, it was about $15, and it came with, of course, two of these joints, one on both sides. Look how much cleaner it is. See, I tried to make mine this thin at first too, but like working with plastic, it's not gonna work. But since this is metal, I can actually have it be pretty thin and strong at the same time. So this guy works the same way. Just a lot nicer. So we're probably going to be using this so it doesn't look as bulky. Um, so, you know, it was a good learning experience, uh, but it, it was a learning experience that didn't need to happen, I guess. Other update. This is the helmet. Uh, if you follow me on... Oh, frick. We're out here dropping battery packs. So if you do follow me on TikTok and Instagram, you've definitely seen this. And honestly, if you haven't come from TikTok or Instagram, if you actually found me on YouTube, let me know in the comments below because I don't know how many people have actually found me through YouTube. But this is the helmet. Uh, I'm gonna have to store all of these electronics inside of it. I want the button or the pressure switch to be on the side so I can like open it with my jaw or something instead of having to use my hands. So I want this to be like an all contained thing. I don't want to have to hook it up to the suit like I did with that one. But I ended up replacing the small servos I had in there with some bigger ones. So that took all day yesterday to do just because of the extent I had to go through to get the smaller ones in there. I had to undo everything but it's fine. It works. So we put two heftier servos in there. It doesn't move like super quick. I can obviously speed it up a little bit but this is the basic gist of what it is. I still have to print the ear pieces um, and that little back piece. Honestly, you can't fit the helmet on your head if this back piece is there, which is why it's modeled to be separate. By the way, STL files for this helmet were designed and modeled by my friend Conrad. He's pretty talented. Um, Y'all should go check him out. I'll put his links down in the description below. But I've got the servos wired up so that everything works pretty well. I'm still gonna have to kind of play around with one of the servos. It sounds like it's struggling. Um, I think it's hitting somewhere, but we'll be able to fix that pretty easily. Uh, we're gonna shove all of these in the helmet and then have that pressure switch I was talking about earlier to control the helmet. Probably mounted like right here or wherever I can press it or something. And it closes. Here's it from the side. I might speed it up a little bit. Um, I like the opening speed. I wish the closing speed was a little faster though, so we might play around with that. But I did want to show this off. Honestly, this might be the reason why a lot of y'all are here. Uh, the video, I think, might have actually hit 10 million views by now on TikTok, which is absolutely insane. So I know that's where a lot of you guys are from. 
Um, so I wanted to make a point to show that I did upgrade the servos in it. And I'll be painting it soon too, hopefully the same color scheme as the chest plate. Um, and it'll be blue here, silver here. And then I'll also keep some black parts in there too, because I think, honestly, a straight black helmet does look really dope. And I know everyone's going to tell me to put it on in the comments, so I'll go ahead and do that. And for everyone asking, <laughs> look at my hair, I can see out of this. Uh, there are little dots. I don't know if, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there are little dots on the little lenses and there are LEDs that are on the side and they shine out onto the dots that reflect the light outwards. If you're looking to buy LED eyes like this for any helmets or anything y'all are making, I like how I'm like talking to you with the helmet down. Literally Google Batman LED eyes. Um, I bought these off of Walmart. Walmart had them on their website for some reason, uh, but I think some guy sells them on eBay and a bunch of different places. It always really do be messing up my hair though. I probably will make another one of these that's just straight black because it looks really cool, I think. So just to give you another view with the lights off, you can clearly see light coming in from my window uh, through the eye too. So they are clear, you can see through them. If you're in a decently lit environment, obviously if, if you're in the dark or like a darker-ish room, like it's just gonna be light, but it's definitely not gonna blind you either. A lot of people are asking me that too. So I've definitely already shown a lot of this stuff on TikTok and Instagram, but just in case people on YouTube haven't seen it or just in case there's people who found me only through YouTube, I wanna show it here too. This is the boot. Um, it can pivot so I can actually walk. I've got it padded on the inside and a strap to hold my foot in place. I wanna thank my pal Danny for the files. He had him just Jay chilling around was like, hey, I think these would work really well for your suit and they are working really well. One thing I did notice though, which I'm pretty sure I would have had to do anyway, no matter what shoe I used, the shin does not really seem to want to fit over the boot. It looks like it does there, but that means my leg is like all the way back here. When realistically it's like right here and it can't actually fit over the boot. So I'm going to do this. I was going to do it to begin with, but I think I'm going to chop off three different sections of here and reattach them with straps. I'll pad the underside of them. I just want to be able to have the bottom kind of flex out and move so I can wear shoes comfortably, walk around comfortably, and not have to worry about things just like accidentally like sitting on top of each other and not looking right. So I am going to chop up the bottom of this, but I'll do it in a nice way, I promise. It's not going to look too ratchet, I hope. But yeah, I know that was a bunch of different random stuff that I showed you, but I know it's also been a while since I posted a video, so I just wanted to do a collective like this is what I have so far. But yes, again, I'm sorry all of this was a bunch of random update stuff, but I did just want to get everything out there so everyone knows where I'm at, what I'm doing with each part. I'm really hyped. A lot of people are asking when it'll be done, and I definitely want to have it done by Halloween. 100% for sure. If I don't have it done before Halloween, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. So that's the goal as far as next projects go. I'm starting to work on a separate arm from the suit. This will be a complete standalone thing that will hopefully shoot bottle rockets out of the arm launcher. So where this forearm flap is right here, I'm thinking I'm going to model it more so after the Mark III Iron Man suit. That way it opens up to the side and doesn't have to lift up, but I'd like to actually shoot a bottle rocket out of it. I think it would be fun. I've already ordered a DIY arc lighter kit and I'm hoping to use that to spark the bottle rocket and make it shoot out of the arm. I'll probably have something like this pressure switch that I have down here um, mounted in it, but only as like a safety precaution to say like it'll only shoot if this is down. I don't want it to be hitting my hand as it shoots off. It is just a bottle rocket, but nevertheless, we still want to be careful. I'm thinking I'll have a separate switch in my hand to actually control it. Um, because obviously I don't want to like accidentally set this off by accident. I just want this to be a safety precaution. So we'll probably do something similar to that. So yeah, there's your update for you. Currently working on the back brace, uh, modeling that and whatnot. I'm new to mesh modeling, so it's taking me a while. I'm still kind of trying to figure things out, but hopefully it'll turn out pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it. So anyway, I don't know how long this video is going to end up being. I actually struggle to make videos longer than about seven minutes long, which is very surprising. It does take a long time to edit them though. 
we a one man show around here, so. But again, I do appreciate you for watching this video. Uh, if you are from YouTube and you haven't found me through TikTok or Instagram, like you found me through YouTube, let me know in the comments below because I am really interested to see how many people have done that. But anyway, thank you and I'll see you whenever the heck I post next. I'll see you later. I'm a full grown 22 year old spinning in a chair.